everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm very glad that you're here with me today. Today we are going to be doing a little something called 21 questions. Hey, <laughs> we all played 21 questions as a kid and I'm sure we, I'm sure everyone did that, right? I know that I did. So usually you're like texting someone for the first time. You're like, let's play 21 questions because you don't know what to talk about. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions for me a while ago and I was saving them for a different video video concept. Here was the video concept. 21 plant chores and 21 questions. Let me tell you, I got through like six plant chores and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. So I decided to do a sit down Q and A because I also have an announcement to tell you guys. So before we get into the Q and A, I wanted to tell you guys there's fungus gnats all over my house. They have invaded and it's so annoying. They're still around from winter. I need to get it together. I need to get some diatomaceous earth but I've been procrastinating. Anyway, um, I wanted to tell you guys that I quit my job. Yes, it's true. I am a self-employed lady now, which is so cool. So De La Plants is my full-time job now. I was not expecting this to happen ever, uh, let alone this soon. Okay, so when I first started my YouTube channel, I remember thinking to myself like, oh yeah, it'd be cool if that was like, if I could make money doing it, but this is just fun for me. And then there came a point, maybe like a year into it, I was like, no, I, I really like my job and I don't really wanna rely on YouTube or anything like that, so I'm content with it not being my job. And I feel like I said that mostly out of like, I don't know, like self-preservation, like I didn't wanna disappoint myself, so I didn't want to like set my sights that high. And then I started going into this mode where I was like, okay, no this is something that you want and let's work for it. So basically for the last two years, I have worked 40 hour work weeks. And then in addition to that, an extra, I don't know, 10 to 20 hours on my YouTube channel, which is made for a lot of really late nights and early mornings doing my YouTube channel, which of course I'm so happy to do it. And I would continue to do it if, the opportunity didn't arise for me to do just this. Yeah, a week ago from the day that you're seeing this, I quit my job. So yeah, that's the update there. And I'm so excited and I'm really, really glad to have the support of my family, my husband, and most of all, I'm so proud of myself for doing this. Okay, so let's get into the questions because I think that this is going to be really fun just to do a little catch up because I've been so like focused in on my gardening content that I kind of forgot about today's video. <laughs> because if you didn't know, I have a new series on my channel it's basically just my entire experience with my first year of gardening and I've already made one video it went up on Sunday so if you want to go check that out you can um, but I already have two others that I've already filmed and edited and uploaded and so they're just waiting to be published for you guys to watch I'm wanting to post them every Sunday but I might throw one out extra maybe next week or something like that just to get caught up yeah i've just loved that whole experience and i feel like it's really pushed me to be a better plant parent and just like just like a forever learner basically i mean i feel like with houseplants i don't know everything i'm not saying that at all but i feel like i've kind of plateaued with like the plants that i want i don't really like desire to get more plants although i did just put it in order because i have an idea for like up here in my sunroom but you know what i mean like i don't feel like i want to like do a bunch of plant shopping for indoors i don't know i just feel really content with my indoor plant collection and i feel like that's a, a place that i have been in for a while but now i'm just kind of letting myself feel content with it and like i just love my plants i love where they're at i love seeing them grow springtime is such a fun time to own plants because you just you see everything come alive outside and then you see everything come alive inside and it is the best feeling ever so anyway i love it okay let's get into the questions okay number one how did you make plant friends and what made you decide you wanted to be friends with them the way that i made plant friends initially was instagram so i love using instagram for meeting people like obviously i've met a lot of people through instagram you guys know I'm, that's how i met adam and nicole but i've also met a lot of other people like actually someone just came and stayed at my house for the night um, because they just needed a place to pull over in their bus because they live in a bus they're just travelers um all the time they're full-time travelers basically and so they needed a place to stay and this is somebody that i met on instagram and we've been talking on instagram for like 
I think like two years, like since before I was married. So probably like almost three years, honestly, we've been talking on Instagram. She and her boyfriend came and stayed with us and it was so awesome. So Instagram, I would say is like the number one place that I've met plant friends. But if I wanted to meet plant friends in real life, I would probably go to like events like plant swaps and like nursery events, like uh, classes and things like that. If nurseries hold classes, usually they'll have like workshops and seminars and stuff like that. So I've met people through stuff like that as well. I definitely have met a lot of people through plant swaps that I maintained relationships with online. And I think especially right now, like in the last year, most of my friendships have been made online because we weren't going out and doing anything like that. So, and then how do I decide that I want to be friends with them? Here's my formula. It, well, I don't know if it's a formula, but here's like my hack, okay? So if you can hold a conversation with somebody not about plants, that's how you know that they would be a good friend like with you or whatever else because I don't know what it is, but talking about plants when you both like plants is like, it's cool, it's a great starting point, but at some point it just gets kind of boring to just be like, oh, what's your favorite plant? Oh, Monster Delicioso, what's yours? And it's, and like, that's it. So you kind of want more from your friendships or at least I do. I really am a person who craves like deep connection friendships. So I just don't really like to stick to the surface level things. I like to talk about life and like deeper things. And so if I can have a conversation that extends past plants, that's when I know that this person is someone who I wanna be friends with. Next question, what are some small things that you've learned to appreciate as you've gotten older? Okay, there's this guy on TikTok and okay, this was like a, a culture reset for me. Like everything shifted when I heard this. So there's this guy on TikTok who was talking about how, like he was just like sitting at his table talking to the camera and he's like, you know what's so cool? Like I'm an adult and I get to do literally whatever I want. Like I can just like go to the gym and then go and get takeout if I want and come home and watch literally whatever show I want. I can go to bed whenever I want. Like just, I don't know why that was such a reset for me in my mind because I feel like I am a very structured person and I like having a lot of structure in my life or else I will literally do nothing. It's a curse, but I have to have structure in my life. But anytime I like veer off of my structured routine, I feel like kind of alive or I don't know, just like realizing that I can do whatever I want. Like, especially now that my job is this, like what I'm doing right now, I'm working right now. Like knowing that I could pick up everything and like drive to Florida tomorrow if I want is the coolest feeling. But and it, it goes down to like even like the smaller things. Like it's not just picking up and leaving tomorrow in Florida. It's like I get to choose whatever I want to eat for dinner. I get to choose when I go to bed, when I wake up. And I just think that it's so cool like as an adult that we can do that type of thing. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Did you see the clap slide? It works every time. Like if you get it in your hand and you clap slide, it's gonna die. Anyway, just one of my little tips. So I don't know, I just think like realizing that type of stuff is what I love about like being an adult. Like what was the question? I feel like I'm veering off. Small things I've learned to appreciate. Yeah, just like being able to make my own choices is like amazing. <laughs> I would say that my parents were strict growing up. I don't know if they would say that they were strict. I think compared to other people's parents, they were kind of like middle ground, but I don't know. Like I was I was allowed to do like pretty much everything I wanted, but there were some things that they were like, no. And as an adult, like I can do literally whatever I want. <laughs> okay, next question. Where do you see De La Plants in a decade? Okay, a decade, that's 10 years from now, I will be 35 years old. De La Plants is like so intertwined with like me and who I, I mean, it is, it is me. So like, I don't really know what Daily Plants is gonna look like, but at that point, I'll probably have a kid or two. I have no idea where we will be living. At that point in time, we'll probably be searching for our forever home, but I know that we'll probably move around a few more times between now and then, because you know, we're just figuring things out. But as far as Daily Plants goes, I honestly, I have no idea. And I think that's the coolest thing because 10 years ago or even one year ago or two years ago, I had no idea what my life would look like. And as someone who's a rigorous planner, 
That is kind of terrifying, but also very exciting because I can't predict what life is gonna look like. But if I was to say, as of right now, what I wanted to look like, I think it would be really awesome to, like, if I'm really reaching, it would be really cool to have some sort of like TV show or definitely another book out, a product line somewhere. Um, I don't know, I have a lot of little goals that I would love to achieve. And I don't, I mean, the most unrealistic one is probably a TV show. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people want a TV show, but I think that would be so cool to have like a, a show surrounding houseplants, something like that, that would be so cool. Uh, and like just living with plants. I just think that would be the coolest show. I would love to take Day of the Plants abroad and like visit other places that where our plants are from, like our, our plants homes like in Colombia and just South America in general. I would love to make that more of an initiative on my channel. I could make my channel like more like a TV show on my own. I don't necessarily need a network to pick me up. I think that would be really cool. But I think in general, De La Plants is gonna look really different in 10 years. So yeah. And somebody asked, planning on kids? Yes, I am planning on having kids. I think this is one of those touchy questions though because you know, you never know what someone is going through with their fertility or just their life decisions. So I would say be very careful who you ask this question to because for me i've never tried to have kids so i don't know if this is going to be a sore spot for later on or whatever else but i think it's just important to like veer on the side of caution when asking someone if they want to have kids and like i don't i don't know i don't know just want to put that out there okay is it next question is it too difficult to manage your personal life full-time job and youtube love from panama hello um it, it was it was very difficult so now i can talk about this in the after context because this is not something that i'm doing anymore as of a week ago which is so crazy i still don't know what my life is going to look like day to day but it was really hard and it was fine like i could have continued to do it but i don't think that i would have been very happy because i had been doing it for two years has it been two years more than two years three years at this three years almost January 1st, 2019 was when I started my channel. So two and a half years. Yeah. I think that, yeah, it would have been really, really difficult to continue on and maintain mental health because, I mean, I really, really struggled with mental health a lot in 20, 2020. Like, I feel like a lot of people did. And it was to the point for me where I started going to counseling and to a therapist and everything. And I've been super open about that. I go online to talk space therapy. I still see my therapist. We don't talk as much anymore, but it's really nice to have that. I had a lot of trouble throughout the year trying to maintain everything and like be creative for myself, but also be creative for my job because I had a creative job. And I don't know if it would have been better if my job was like really analytical and like not creative. I don't know if it would have been easier that way, but I feel like I was constantly in create mode because I, I created content for them. I mean, I'm still going to a couple hours a month, but it'll be so, so much less, like literally a fraction of the amount of time that I used to spend. And I feel like I'm just gonna have so much more headspace for this and to put time and energy and hopefully money into projects that I really want to focus on. But I don't know, it was really, really difficult. And it was, that's all I can really say. It was really hard. I could have kept doing it, but it was really putting a strain on my mental health. Okay, next question. If you didn't have your job or plants, what would you be doing? Okay, so basically if my life was completely different, I would probably be like a full-time traveler in like a van or living in another country probably. I mean, that is still definitely something that we want to do we would love to live in another country for a couple years because it's just such a cool experience and especially if we did it before kids that would be nice but if our kids are small that's fine too i annoy myself a lot because i do this thing where i think about like my life in like two paths so like there's the path that i took which was getting married like relatively young well first of all graduating from high school going to college you know getting my degree and then getting married like pretty close after each other i didn't take any breaks in between and obviously i like love that path for me i love daniel i love that i did that it's just sometimes i think about what this path would have looked like 
like if I maybe took a gap year after high school or I think the gap year after high school would have really changed a lot of things but that wasn't even a thought in my mind to take a gap year for me it was like if I take a gap year I'll never go back it just felt like I had to go to school right away and I'm glad that I did because it really it shifted my my ways of thinking so much and I just was exposed to so much more like when you're in school and you're I was an English major so I did a lot of reading like a lot of reading and researching and so I was really challenged in that way but I really I don't know I can't say like I don't regret any of my life decisions but if my life like if, if I was to live in a parallel universe <laughs> and like hop over to the other one I think that I would be traveling and living in another country for sure and yeah and life is so long that these things are still possible even after I've taken this path you know that's something that I have to remind myself is that I'm 25 which is so crazy to say but my life is not over because I'm 25, you know? There's so much life left to live and so much time to live both of these parallel universe, universes, universes that I have in my mind. My battery's gonna die, hold on. Okay, next question is most enjoyable part of making your book, love ya. Love you too. If you didn't know, I wrote a book about houseplant care and I normally have a copy next to me, but I don't right now. But yeah, that process was so much fun. It was really, really great. And I feel like years and years in college writing crazy research papers. Oh my God, I think I see a deer out there. Oh no, it's just a bush. Anyway, yeah, writing really long research papers and everything else really prepared me for the amount of text I would have to create. I remember I went like 5,000 words over the limit and had to pare down the book <laughs> quite a bit. But I don't know, I think that the part at the beginning where I was talking through houseplant care and like what to do to, when you bring your houseplants home, where plants come from, like all that kind of stuff, that was so much fun to write. I loved that portion of the book. It was just, yeah, honestly it was so much fun. So that was definitely the most enjoyable part and then the latter half was very challenging, <laughs> but I'm very proud that I did it. The latter half is basically plant profiles on a hundred different house plants. Okay, next question. Do you have any tattoos? If so, what are they? So I have one tattoo on my foot right there. <laughs> it's not that exciting. It was just like a stick poke that a friend did for me a couple years ago. And I have considered getting another tattoo like on my arm somewhere. I oftentimes put a fake tattoo there, like right here is where I've thought about getting one or like um, right here so it's covered when I put my arm down. So yeah, we'll see if I end up doing it, but I would really love to have a saguaro, like a really beautiful saguaro tree, not tree, saguaro cactus. And I have an artist in mind as well and she does do tattoo drawings. So I have it like all set up to where if I did wanna do it, I know exactly the sequence of events that needs to happen but I think it would mostly be finding the artist to do the tattoo who I could trust because I don't really want a lot of tattoos. I would really only want like probably the one just because it's a representation of where I came from. So I think that's really special, but I've never been a person who like desires to get tattoos, but I do think they're really cool and fun. But yeah, I think that would be the only tattoo that I would get if I was to get another one. All right, what's your opinion on humans' relationships with nature, physically or spiritually? Would nature be better off without us or have we made impactful changes? This is something that I think about all the time, especially recently. It's such a hard question because is nature better off without us? I think as we're existing right now, nature is definitely better off without us. But as indigenous cultures lived hundreds of years ago and even today, I think the way that they treat nature, definitely nature, is better with them. Major corporations and everything else just don't give a shit. And so, I don't know, it just like seeps into like the culture and I don't know. I think as life is right now in non-indigenous cultures, I think that nature is definitely better off without us. Which is a, a sad thing to say, but yeah, that's that's just my opinion on that one. Okay, if you were stuck on a deserted island, who other than Daniel would you want with you? Okay, if you're new, Daniel is my husband, so love him. He's the best and he would be an amazing person to have on a deserted island because he's strong, he's resourceful, he just is like so, um, what's the word I'm thinking? He just like perseveres, he's a great guy to have. Um, yeah, if anyone needs to borrow him for your deserted island adventures, there's a small fee. <laughs> 
But other than him, I would say my best friend growing up, Hannah. None of you guys know her or have seen her, I doubt. Yeah, none of you have ever seen her probably. But she was my roommate for the year before I got married and she's just awesome. We grew up together. We were inseparable best friends in like uh, sixth grade through middle school, a little bit of ninth grade, and then we lost contact 10th through most of 10th through 12th grade. And then at the end of high school, we kind of became best friends again. And it was kind of like we never skipped a beat. So she's awesome. She is extremely resourceful. She is like, she can live on the edge. She just, I don't know, she's a welder. Like she's freaking badass. And yeah, I would absolutely want her with me because she knows, I know that she would know how to survive. Out of, <laughs> out of those two, I would be the one that's like crying all the time. Like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> and they would be the ones finding solutions, honestly. <laughs> if you could go back to Arizona right now to live, would you? This is so incredibly hard because for the entire time from graduating high school up until like the end of college, I was desperate to leave Tucson, like desperate. And even through high school and growing up, I was like, I'm not gonna stay here. I don't wanna stay here. And then it wasn't until the end of college that I was like, no, I actually really love Tucson. And I think that's a big part of that is because I got to see Tucson through my best friend's eyes. And like I had a few friends who were from out of state or out of city. And the way that they loved and cherished Tucson just really gave me a bigger heart for the city. And I don't know, I, I moved to a different part of the town, uh, the city when I was an adult, obviously. So I wasn't living in like the suburb that I grew up in. So it felt really different. And that kind of like put into perspective how big Tucson is because you can just like drive 40 minutes up the highway and it feels like you're in a completely different place, which like, it didn't fully set in to me how big Tucson was until I like started telling people that and I was like, oh my God, that's a big town, <laughs> big city. Would I go back to live right now? Part of me says yes, because that's where 90% of my friends are and I miss them so much. I miss my family. I miss just like having them so close and just being able to drive to my parents' house and hang out with them and like being able to just like hang out with my friends every night. I miss it so incredibly much. It's really sad to not be able to do that. But at the same time, I've grown a lot as a person since I left and I know I've wanted to leave for a really long time and I knew that Tucson wasn't going to be my forever place that I lived. Would I like to go back maybe for a portion of time? Maybe. M m retirement? I don't I don't really know because thinking about going back kind of would feel like I'm going backwards, but I know that's not what it would be, but for me, I don't know, like I kind of have my sights set elsewhere for now. So I don't think that I would take the opportunity to move back right now, which makes me really sad to say, but I just know that there's still so much more to see and experience and and, and I don't even really know where I would want my forever home to be, which is kind of an unsettling feeling, not knowing where I'm gonna end up and like build my life. I don't know, it's really unsettling actually now that I think about that because there isn't a place in the US that I'm like, I wanna live here. There's just not, I've never, I don't know. There's just not, I'd rather live somewhere else, but we'll see, I, don't, I think that I am obviously gonna live in the US. Yeah, there's just not a place that I can think of that I like want to put roots down and like want to live there forever and like raise my kids there and stuff, which is kind of an unsettling feeling, but I don't know. Hopefully in time I figure that out. Okay, what's your daily routine? Also, I'm sorry I asked for cactus advice in your DMs once. That's totally okay. Sometimes I will talk about on Instagram how it's really hard for me to get to every DM and like, especially hard when people ask me like plant care questions because there's so many factors and it's just really hard to give sound advice based off of like a few things. So anyway, don't worry about it. But yeah, if you do message me for plant advice on Instagram, I might not reply because I don't really, you know, I'll try to reply, but I, at the end of the day, there's only so much that I can do from across the phone. <laughs> anyway, okay, so thank you for saying that, but you don't need to feel bad. Okay, so the question, daily routine. All right, I don't really know anymore because of my whole job situation, but up until this point, like I'll tell you what I did today. So today I woke up at 8.30, which is normally the time that I wake up. I am a late riser, especially 
with daylight savings when that happened that really screwed me up like for a couple weeks i felt really gross and i was sleeping until like i think 10 o'clock which is so bad but my body just does not function er like early in the morning so i'm very much so just letting myself be a night person and then get up whenever in the morning i used to feel really guilty about waking up later because like the whole mindset is like oh get up early like hit the grind but i'm just not like that i can't do it so morning i kind of like hung around and like did a few things around the house kind of later morning i went outside and i pulled some weeds i let my mornings be like life management and chores because then the rest of the day i'm able to focus better i don't yeah i don't really know why i'm just more productive later in the day so when it was around noon so like from noon to two o'clock i was working um on some stuff for my previous job which now i'm a contractor a couple hours a month like i said so i worked for a little bit on that and then i took my dogs to the groomers did a little bit of life management and then i got back from that and now i'm filming a video and so yeah that's basically been my day so pretty much what i want to do is fit in you know eight ish like six to eight hours a day of work here and there and this is so crazy because it's so unstructured compared to what my life was because i used to wake up at 8 30 and then by 9 i was working and i'd worked from like 9 to like 4 30 or 5 and then after that i would go out into the garden or i'd edit or i'd film so i don't really know what my daily routine is going to look like but i'll check back <laughs> When I have one. Okay, next question. What is your dream city in the US to live in? And how long do you think you'll live in Missouri? Okay, so I kind of already answered this on accident, but I don't have a dream city to live in if I'm being honest. And if I was to think of a dream city, it wouldn't be in the United States. Like I think it would be so cool to live in like Australia. That would be really awesome. Like so cool but also more on like the dreamy side, if I could live in like the northern northern area of italy that would be in like ridiculously insane like such a dream like if i could find some sort of like abandoned house <laughs> like this is me like really dreaming i would probably buy like some abandoned house in the italian like northern italian countryside and rebuild it with my family and that would be the ideal so that's not realistic at all like at all at all if that ever happened i that would be absolutely insane but yeah that's not realistic but that's the only dream that i can think of because nothing in the u.s really is popping out at me right now i think that i maybe need to like visit more places to like fall in love but yeah okay and how long do you think you'll live in missouri we'll probably be here three and a half four years i mean yeah we, we know that this isn't our forever home which kind of sucks we were talking uh yesterday about how this would have been like a great place to raise kids because we have so much space you know it's next to big ish town it's just a great house so it kind of sucks that we bought this house as our first house because we know it's not going to be our house forever and i don't know we we have thought about like holding on to it until you know we're all ready to settle down into our forever home and then we can come back to this house but I don't know it's all up in the air but for now we're probably going to be moving in like three or four years all right next question favorite missouri spring wildflower or tree or plant you've encountered so far okay so for some reason maple trees have always been it for me like i love maple trees um i think that like the leaf shape is really beautiful so we do have a beautiful uh maple tree in our front yard right here and in the fall it turned the most beautiful bright like burnt orange color it was so pretty as far as wildflowers go i really really love what is that one it's like the big white flower that's like kind of flat queen anne's lace that one queen anne's lace is definitely my favorite wildflower and none have come up just yet but our back meadow normally has like a ton so i'm excited for that are you or have you ever been into comic books do you like marvel or dc movies <laughs> sorry random that's fine that's really fun okay no the answer is no i never really been into comic books or anything like that i did read a few graphic novels in college but they weren't like superhero situations it was about other stuff daniel does like it so like i'll sit with him and watch it but you know what i've been liking i've been kind of liking anime i know it's kind of fun <laughs> uh we went and saw demon slayer in 
theaters a couple weeks ago and it was so cool it was our first time being in theaters in like well over a year i loved it it was a great movie i cried if you haven't watched the series on Netflix, watch it on Netflix and then go watch the movie. It's really good. What are you most excited for in your new house this summer? Okay, a couple weeks ago, I would have said all of the green. And I think that's still my answer. I'm just really excited to see everything so lush and like filled up and just green but with all of that comes like things that are gross and scary to me like ticks like i don't know why but ticks have like really ruined it for me <laughs> we have found three ticks in our bed probably because they like hop on the dogs and then hop off to like find a better host which would be either me or daniel but like our dogs have medication a lot of people have commented and messaged like make sure your dogs are on medication they are that was one of the first things we did when we got here we're asking a positive question so what are you most excited for in the new house this summer i think just like seeing the green spending time cultivating the land and just like making it what we want like on the outside like landscaping that really really makes the house a better place to live and it also brings up the value of the property so while we're like making it better for us we're also helping Helping our future selves when it comes to selling the house because this is a great house it really is so great but it it is barren at this point like it looks the curb appeal is not there so I think once the curb appeal is brought up it'll be really easy to sell when the time comes we have a plant question so what plant has been the most challenging and stressful for you to take care of and do you still have it the most challenging plants that i've ever had was probably the philodendron varicosum and i've talked about this a few times but it was just really really easy to take care of at the beginning like it grew so fast and then it had spider mites over and over and over and over again and it eventually just took the plant but i was able to take stem cuttings off of it and grow leaves from the stems which i'm currently trying to figure out what to do now because the wet sticks have put out a leaf and now i don't know what to do with them so Definitely the most challenging would be that one. And then I think the most frustrating plant or stressful plant would be my philodendron mame, mame, mame eye. Apologies, I do this every time I say the word. But that plant was my most prized possession. It was literally my favorite plant in my entire collection. And one day I noticed that it was like drooping even though the soil was wet. And I was like, oh my God, it has a root rot. Like I just knew. And I unpotted the plant and had root rot and it didn't look that bad at that point, but it just kept getting worse and worse. And I discovered that literally days before we made this big cross country move, it was just doomed. And finally it is to the point where it's put out two leaves leaves from a wet stick so literally praise the lord i'm so happy that has been so stressful because to buy another one would be so expensive and i just don't really like any of the ones that i see for sale so i've been like i need to figure this out what is a weird or random fact about you that most people don't know i'm gonna expose myself i still sleep with a teddy bear i'm not embarrassed about it i love my teddy bear his name is barry <laughs> I'm a 25 year old woman and I sleep with an oversized teddy bear because really it's not the fact that he's a teddy bear but it's just the fact that he's like the size of like a large pillow and Barry has been with me since I was 11 and honestly when I got married I was like I'm not getting rid of him like why would I get rid of Barry he's been with me he's the best I still sleep with Barry I think a lot of people do actually well not with Barry but like you know their own Barry <laughs> We're getting to the end. This is the second to last, so stick with me. This is a, probably a really long video. Okay, any past relationships? I have had past relationships, and I haven't talked about them a ton on, on the internet. I don't think I've ever talked about them online. But yeah, I did have, uh, I would say, two other really serious relationships. One of them was in high school. It kind of extended a little bit into college, and then the second one was in college. And... The, the one in college, like I thought we were gonna get married and then all of a sudden it just like ended. And like, I don't really wanna talk about the details, but I was absolutely blindsided. Now that I'm older, I can see that, you know, we were better not together. But a lot of boyfriends that I had, I was like, can I see myself marrying them? And I didn't really spend a lot of time like thinking about who they were and like our compatibility. So I don't know, like I was really, really blindsided for both of those relationships when they ended. I was the one that was broken up with. And of course, like I dated other people like before and in between. I was super, I was a flirt, okay? I was a flirt and I liked dating. I really loved going on dates and just like hanging out with people. But yeah, as far as like super serious relationships, it was those two. And um, 
one of them I kind of talk to still because I mean we grew up together so it's kind of weird to like never talk again we talk sometimes but then the other one I haven't talked to in a really long time so yeah and then I met Daniel like I think like nine months or nine almost a year after that college relationship ended I met Daniel at the end of junior year of college and then we just never stopped hanging out and we're still hanging out and we've been together for almost four years. Wait, it's been four years. Four years, almost four years. Oh my God, it'll be four years in like, wait, it's already been four years. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, together for four years, married for two. Oh my gosh, this is kind of an anticlimactic question to end on, but is mushroom growth on plant soil bad? <laughs> kind of like tanking. No, I don't think that they're a bad thing at all because it means that there's healthy fungal activity happening in your pot. It doesn't take away from the plant in any way. It's just something that happened. And if you don't want them in your pot, you can just pull them out. It's not a big deal. If you bought the De La Tank soil, you've probably experienced like really skinny mushrooms, like little skinny white mushrooms. I talked with Shota about it in our soil chat videos. And also like, I don't know, we've talked about it since people have said, hey, I found a mushroom, is that okay? And it's totally fine. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for watching the world's longest Q&A on my channel. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. If you have any additional questions, you can leave them or any clarifications, you can leave them in the comment box below. Again, thank you so much for supporting my channel and I'm so excited to share this news with you that I quit my job. I'm so excited. So yeah. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.